34 years ago. Uh, Bear Bryant, uh, he had retired 37 days later. Uh, he passed away. He went to the hospital. Uh, Dr. Hill, William Hill, uh, said that he had a heart attack. They put a pacemaker in and got a little bit of breath uh, back out of him, but he ended up passing away at 2.30 uh, p.m. that day. Dr. Hill said he had been joking earlier that morning about going to Las Vegas. What day was that? What was it? Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I tell, I'm going to tell the story. Yeah, but I, I, he said that he was, you know, talking earlier to that, that morning, joking around about saying he was going to go to Vegas. Uh, he wanted to go to Arkansas and do some duck hunting and stuff. Uh, so 37 days after he retired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So go ahead. I'll let you take it from there. Well, it's Sunday afternoon. Uh, we we're to play. We we're to play UCLA on the next Saturday. And Sunday afternoon, I'm up looking at some film, and I go out to get a drink of water in, in, in the hall. Coach Bryant comes to the double doors and keeps walking. Uh, walks into my office, which he, you know, never did ever, and sat down on the couch. And I took a chair, pulled it over, and pulled it up in front of him, and he started telling me about, I don't remember what all he told me. One thing was, I wish I had taped it. Uh, one thing is, he didn't, he didn't like the way he had handled Snake Stabler. Uh, he talked about the flea flicker or whatever it was at, at the Georgia game when Vince Dooley was the coach. Talked about several different things. Uh, on Monday, I get word that he is uh, ill, sick. On Tuesday, uh, I don't know whether he's passed away or not, but the rumors were that they had been keeping it quiet, and they thought perhaps he had. On Wednesday afternoon, we're at practice. We're going to go out a day early because we're going all the way to L.A., and it was a big deal. So they came down and said, Coach Bryant's passed away. And I said, well, you know, we're on CBS with UCLA, Vital and his bunch are calling the games. I need to find out from Coach Bryant, from Paul Jr., what he wants us to do. I don't recall whether I called Paul Jr. or what, but we got in touch with Paul Jr., and he said Papa would have wanted you to play. So we went to, to Willie Meadows, who was the equipment manager for everything at Alabama. Now they got, you know, they got one for every sport. But he was, he was an equipment manager for all of them, and he put – little black armbands on our uniforms, little black things around the top of our uniforms. Uh, we're going to fly out there, and we do. And the proceedings for Coach Bryant's service was that he wanted, uh, they wanted him to drive through some small towns on the way to the cemetery uh, in Birmingham. So they had it on television. So our kids, you know, we were all in our rooms watching it. And the the bus the the uh, the hearse went down through I think Centerville and, and down through all the different little towns uh, on the way to Birmingham. Um, uh, Donahue was the was the coach football coach. I can't think of his first name. Ed, 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 Ed okay. Donahue. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, gave the invocation, and. Um, it was pretty much a, a difficult time, you know. We were we are all all the way in L.A., and um, not that this means anything, but we won, we won the game. We beat UCLA. They were number one in the country, two points, which certainly was a was a good win. It was a disappointing time with Coach Bryant having passed away. But basically, uh, I I don't know if he died on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. I have a feeling he got sick over at. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name's house that he got sick at. He got sick at a house that night. And I, I, I want to say that he passed away on Tuesday and they announced it on Wednesday. But I could be wrong about that. But that's what happened. Uh, so I think people kind of remember where you were. I remember watching that on TV, the buses. I think they went around, went past the stadium. Uh, there were people lined up uh, in the streets uh, between here and Birmingham watching – the buses uh, go, I guess, towards Birmingham. But you were uh, close with Mary Harmon. Is that, uh, uh, I, did. You I, got, got, I, I went out to see her a great deal, a lot. Uh, tried to. I uh, went out by myself some in that, and I went out some, uh, and you know, visited with her. And she was, she was, she was kind of cute. She would say, "If y'all are playing bad," and Paul, and of course, I don't call Coach Bryant anything but Coach Bryant, but she said, Paul, they're sitting there. I said, Paul, move. 
move. And she and I, she said, sometimes I could be standing in the kitchen and y'all would play re- really bad. And I'd go into the other room where y'all play really good. Well, she had all those ideas. And she came to some games. She liked basketball. And well, but I was sure that we got her there. I uh, I went out one day. Um, uh, I guess Annette and I went out one day. And we did the, the um, ins- I think it was the insurance people came in. Came in. And she asked me, she said, I, I don't want to be put on a machine to live. And she said, would you sign that for me? And I said, sure, that's what you want. And so I signed it where she would, she, we would, for what she wanted to do. So I saw her a lot. Uh, I didn't bug her, but I did try to go by because what happens to you in cases like that is that you're, you're, you know, married to a famous personality and people get all, upset about the passing away which they should have but then when time goes by uh, Paul Jr. certainly checked on her and the family checked on her but nobody else outside of that you know checks on her much so I tried as best I could to go by and speak to her and say hello and and uh, she gave me I have two pair of his shoes I want to give back I haven't worn his I have sweaters his pajamas that she wanted to give me so I I didn't want to say no so I took them I thought maybe they and and uh she offered me a lot of his sport coats, and they know way too big. And I said, you know, just give me someone else. So, uh, but she was a she was a great lady, and uh, um, it was uh, you know a tough time. Yeah, I uh, I know she gave you a bunch of stuff. You got it in a memorabilia case up there. When I was a kid. I didn't know any better, James. Uh, she gave him some Nike golf shoes, and on the back of them, on the back, on the heel, instead of saying Nike, it said Bear. Well, James, I was going to play golf, and I needed some golf shoes. So I slipped them got little puppies on my feet. I was down there at Tuscaloosa Country Club trapping through the sand trap in Bear Bryant's golf shoes. I didn't know I had Lord knows how much those shoes cost. I had some expensive shoes on my feet. Uh, uh, those shoes are in a case now. So if they tell you that Bear Bryant was the last guy to wear those, it's not actually true. It was me at Tuscaloosa Country Club walking the golf course in the sand traps. So I get to the Taco Casa hotline and get kevin in good morning kevin how you doing morning good morning barry good morning coach how are you all doing good fine i hate january the 26th every year um because i miss coach bryant so much um uh, he 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 when coach bryant was at kentucky mary Harmon bryant it was funny hearing you talk about her coach mary Harmon bryant and my grandmother ida may barker became close friends and it's a friendship that they maintained uh, even after Coach moved on to College Station and on to, to Tuscaloosa. Uh, and I'll never forget, uh, in 1981, when my mom was battling cancer and our family was at a low point, Coach, uh, my grandmother reached out to Coach Bryant, and uh, he he uh, he touched me in a way that I'll never forget at a time that I was probably at the lowest in my life. And uh, I'll never forget that. Um, my first time I saw Coach Bryant in person was in Birmingham when they won their 300th game. They beat Kentucky 45-7, to and it wasn't that close. And I'll never forget that day he passed away. We uh, we couldn't have practice at, at basketball that day because they had waxed the gym that morning, and they put too much wax on the floor. So Coach said uh, no practice. So everyone went over to my house, and we were kind of playing pickup football in my front yard. And, you know, those old boom boxes you used to carry in the early 80s. And I had my boom box cranked up with music, and we were all throwing the football around and being foolish. And they interrupted to say that Coach Brian had passed away. And I just stopped. And uh, I went over there, and I picked that boom box up. And I picked it up over my head, and I slammed it to the ground into a thousand pieces. And I went into my front, went in the front door, and I went right to my room, and I slammed that door and I cried myself to sleep that night. And I didn't go to school the next day because I just love Coach Bryant so much. And I just couldn't believe he was gone. And I still get choked up today thinking about Coach Bryant, what he meant to me personally, what he meant to the University of Alabama and the state of Alabama. I love Coach Saban, but there'll never be another Coach Bryant. Well said, Kevin. That's, that's good stuff there. I can, I, can, you know, I, can, I, can, I can feel your heart talking there, buddy. Funny thing for me, and not 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 put me, is that today is my mother's birthday, and um, she passed away in Little Rock with me, unfortunately. But but uh, today is her birthday as well. 
Uh, two great people there. All right, Kevin, we appreciate your call, buddy. Uh, have a great day. You too. Roll tight. We were talking about Coach Bryant. I was reading the article here. I, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize he, he was going to stay on as AD. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, Ray Perkins was hired uh, to come in and, and coach the football team. You don't ever say replace Coach Bryant. But I got to imagine that had to be a very – Difficult deal for Ray Perkins as well. Uh, you know, not to have Coach Bryant there to bounce things off of, uh, to walk in as, you know, kind of take this thing over. Coach Bryant's gone. Uh, that had to be difficult for Coach Perkins to just to be able to get his arms around all, all of this, uh, here that goes on the university and what Coach Bryant had built, but not be able to go bend his ear and sit down in, on the couch and talk to him. Uh, about maybe getting some ideas and things. That probably had to be difficult for Coach Perkins, too, didn't it? Yeah, it was a difficult time. Um, Ray uh, struggled with it, I think, some, and people struggled maybe with him a lot. Um, You know, it was things that you did. uh, They would compare it to what they thought Coach Bryant would have done. Um, I guess – the handling of people that were there, the new people that he brought in to take the place of some of the coaches that were already on the staff, uh, you know, caused some friction. And, uh, and of course, taking the tower down, uh, they, you know, like he thought it was a thing to do. A lot of people didn't think, thought it was being disrespectful. It was a lot of different things that came up, uh, during that period of time that, uh, uh, he was trying to take over for Coach Bryant, you know, Ray was uh, had gotten into the semifinals with New York head coach of the New York Giants, and um, I never will forget Galen McCullough, who's a friend of his, called me about about interest that Ray had and uh, in the job, and so uh, Ray got the job, and and Ray worked his fanny off. Uh, he was, it was you know it was a struggle for him, but he worked you know, and they were, he was going against Pat. Die, who was down at, at Auburn, and both of them, you know, known each other. I can't remember if they were on the same staff together. I guess they were. Um, so it was um, it was a very difficult, demanding uh, situation. Uh, I don't I don't know how it will be when Coach Saban gets out. Uh, probably a little bit different in that. Uh, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Saban doesn't have a tower, so to speak. He has, the, of course, the statues and so forth that they have now. So it um, uh, it was a difficult time without me really getting into it. Yeah, uh, Coach Saban, I guess, has got something you can't touch or really see the process. Uh, so I guess whoever comes in, if they think he's deviating from the process, whatever the process is, uh, then there will be some people, uh, you know, you won't be able to please everybody just like, you know, taking that tower down. Anything that Ray Perkins really did in that situation, he was going to have a split uh, group about anything that he did just because of taking over for a legend. And then the legend's not there anymore to even defend maybe some of the things that you're doing. I think that would probably take some pressure off of him if, Coach Bryant would have been able to verbally say, "Hey, leave him alone and let him, let him do what he's going to do." Uh, that probably could have taken some pressure off of Coach Perkins there, couldn't it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it just a, it was a different time. You know, you had to go about it in a way when so many of those uh, staff members had played for Coach Bryant, and some of them had played with Ray. Uh, so um, it was. In a difficult time. I, I I can't. Ray was very very good to me, and uh, he, I thought, liked what we were trying to do, and knew we were trying to you know, have a decent basketball program along with a football program. And and um, Ray and I still remain. I don't see him much, but we remain good friends. So um, you know, it, it wasn't that way with everybody, but uh, I was fortunate enough to to um, you know be able to be a friend of his.